In this video, I'm going to go over some hot AI stocks, including SoundHound AI. I'm going to go over my three biotech swing plays for ticker PTPI. They dropped a PR with a multi-billion software provider in the headline. It had a big pop and halted up. It came back down. I'm going to go over how I'm going to be playing PTPI, you know, going forward here. And I'm going to go over ticker DTSS here, where... It seems like it's becoming the norm right now, where every single day you wake up, you check the pre-market movers, you look at what you're going to be trading for that day, and we're seeing a Chinese stock. In this case, this is a Chinese company, ticker DTSS. We're seeing a Chinese stock with no news running up 1,000% on massive volume, just seemingly out of nowhere. Yes, we can trade these stocks, and I'm going to go over how you can look to trade a stock like this if you're seeing one, you know, going forward here. Remember, this is not going to last, not every single day for the rest of 2024. We're going to be, a th we're going to be seeing 1,000% runners like this, but while we have it, we want to be able to take advantage of it and make some money off of this. So how could you trade ticker DTSS? So first of all, when a stock first pop pops up on the top gainers list and it it has a massive run, in, in this case, pretty much the first pop for DTSS was a 335% move. In that case, I'm really not looking to get in on the first pop because I, on a random 335% pop on a Chinese stock, there's also a really high chance that this is going to drop right back down and it's going to fade off all day and become nothing that's always a chance so you can't you don't really want to be risking getting in on 300 percent pop and then it coming back down and then you're screwed well what you can do is you can look at the first pop and see where it topped out at so in this case we can see that we topped out, so if we go to the five minute here, we go to the five minute chart here, we can see we topped out really at right around, you know, 595, let's call it $6. So right here, we topped out at six. And then that's the level we're gonna want to watch for it to break over and hold over that level for, you know, a couple candles. Because if it's able to break over that previous pre-market high and hold over that, then that's kind of showing us that we can probably catch another 10, 20, 30%. In this case, turned out to be another 100% move, but 10, 20, 30, 40, 50% pops, you know, out of these types of plays. So how you could play this is, how I would play this, how I'm playing these stocks right now is, you know, after that initial pop, let it come back down and then see if it can curl back up. So be watching this play. If it can curl back up here and break over that six, this time it got, re you know, the first time it tried, it got rejected off that six, which, you know, that could have easily been a double top and then faded away the rest of the day. But it double topped, it came back down to VWAP, it bounced off of VWAP and ex it exploded over six. And these candles, you can see this time it's not just fading back down under six. This time it exploded over six, held one, two, three, four, five, two minute candles over, over six. So that's a very good sign of strength. And then, you know, once you saw that, you, you know, I would be looking to get in somewhere around here. You know, maybe you want to wait for even more confirmation of it really breaking away over six. In this case, it held over six, stayed at around 680, broke through seven, that's a, you know, a really good sign that it's, you know, it can continue higher here. So breaking over seven um, was extra confirmation that you needed to kind of, you know, get in a quick position. You could even, you know, I would even be, if, I, if I'm trading this, I'm looking to even get out 20%, you know, 10%, 20%, 40%, slowly selling. Let's say I have a 5,000 share position that I bought here on this breakout at 760. I'm selling a thousand shares at 15%, another thousand shares at 25%, another thousand shares at 
and then I have 2,000 shares left out of the 5,000. I may be I may want to hold a few runners because this could keep going. Um, maybe I sell out to only a thousand shares remaining. I I had five thousand at first. I have a thousand shares remaining, which those a thousand shares I call my runners, where runners are just me holding a very small portion of my initial position. So if it does something like this, you can catch that next, you know, 100 percent run. And then you're well in the profit. You cut the rest of the runners out while it's running. You know, you sell 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, cut out the runners. Boom. You're in profit. You take your trade for the day. That's your green trade for the day. You can take the rest of the day off. That's how I would look to trade something like DTSS. That's how I'm trading something like DTSS every single day. Look for that breakout. And you can definitely bank off these plays. Just don't be the one buying in at the top and then holding the bag. If the trade doesn't work out, and I'm always cutting it. I'll cut for a 5% loss any day of the week so I can prevent a much larger loss. So that's how you got to be looking to trade DTS. Remember, these are these are very risky. You got to be very careful trading st something like this, but there is a lot of money to be made right now. Just don't be the one holding the bag and holding this one long term. Think it's going to explode a much higher because you always got to be taking your green. Now, let's flip over to ticker SoundHound AI. If you guys have been following this, following this channel for a while here now, you guys know I've put out a substantial amount of due diligence on SoundHound, and it's starting to get a lot of eyes and attention now. It is up 47% in after-hours trading, along with a few other AI-related stocks, and that is because NVIDIA reported a stake in arm soundhound and a biotech company so it reported a stake in ticker s-o-u-n so basically and this is crazy because nvidia i already covered this a while ago nvidia has had a position in soundhound since 2017 so this is not a new position they've had a three point nvidia has held 3.67 million dollars worth of soundhound since 2017 but they had to, they had to report a 13f filing to show you know their current positions and soundhound continues to be one of their positions so that's a very good sign um although we uh we also saw that softbank they actually took a new stake in soundhound so SoftBank is another billion dollar company. They took a 17.8 million share position in quarter four, which is a new stake. So they added 17.8 million shares in quarter four of SoundHound AI. So another good sign for SoundHound. And we can also see that BlackRock, one of the biggest companies in the entire world, company that arguably controls the, wor the world to a certain extent, reports a 5.6% stake in SoundHound to AI, and this was probably already known. BlackRock may have already had this position for years, just like NVIDIA did, but it was able to cause SoundHound to surge. When it comes to the chart here for this one, SoundHound really needs to break and hold over this 330 level. So this 335 level, you can see from you know previously back here, this was a tough level of resistance to break over. You know, it was struggling trying to hold over this level for quite some time back in 2022. Once it broke under 335, it tanked back down. And you can see when it does break over 335, it does have nice moves. So here on the 335 break, that's a 53 or 53% move. And here on the 335 break, it that was another 50% 50, 50 move. And you can see that the 335 has previously been some very strong resistance and it's been difficult for SoundHound to hold over that. Okay? So that's what I'm going to be looking for SoundHound. Um if it does if it's not able to hold over 335, you could definitely definitely see a pullback just basically because you know that news is solely based off of Nvidia's position. And this run is based off that solely just that NVIDIA position. And, uh, 
it may, you know, investors may catch on to that and start to realize, oh, this is not a new position. And, you know, there may be some people that have been in this for a while looking to take some profit on a 50% move. So I would not be completely surprised to see a pullback down to around 270s here. So you can see this 270 level has previously been a resistance, previously been a difficult to su support to break over, and previously even way back here in 2022 has been a strong level of support. So don't be completely surprised if you do see a pullback back around to that 270 level. That's definitely a possibility. So keep an eye on that. But overall, that's you know great news for Soundtown. Uh, love to see this one run up. Also, we got ticker NNOX. This one is the same thing. Basically, uh, NVIDIA reported a very small stake in, you know, they, they disclosed a small holding in NNOX, NanoX Imaging. And they only reported a 59,000 share stake in NanoX Imaging. And this just shows you how much NVIDIA controls the market right now, how much influence NVIDIA has on the market right now, where they caused the stock to run 103%, you know, $300 million company to run 100% in after hours based off of a tiny, tiny stake that they've probably held for years. Even RxRx ran 13% in after hours. And the thing about RxRx is, yes, Soundhound has an investment in RxRx, but they've had this $50 million investment since July 13th, 2023. And it ran 13% because simply they reported that they still own those shares. So NVIDIA can, is, has a major influence on these stocks. If, if there's anything uh, talking about NVIDIA, if a stock puts NVIDIA in a PR headline, if they're just simply using their GPUs and a, and a company puts that, oh, we started using NVIDIA GPUs, NVIDIA processors, then the stock's going to rip. That's just how it is right now with NVIDIA. You can see NVIDIA continues to go up every single day right now. There's really no, no sign of slowing this down just yet. Of course, at some point, this is going to pull back. But for now, it's a market leader. It's continuing to rise higher, even when the overall market's red. Now, ticker PTPI, this one had a very interesting move today. So I don't know what's up with this candle. That's just a Weeble candle. But PTPI drop news right at market open. So this was crazy. Right at market open, I have my scanners up and I just, right when the market opens, 9.30 a.m., I hear PTPI, PTPI, PTPI. Boom, on the scanner, I'm like, what's going on? This wasn't doing anything all pre-market. Usually when something's not doing anything pre-market, you're not gonna get a runner right at open. But the first stock I heard was PTPI. I go to check it out and they have a huge headline. PTPI enters into an AI licensing agreement with a leading multi-billion dollar software provider. This AI software is expected to further enable Petro's efforts to make Stendra the first ED product to be offered over the counter. They recognize the importance of integrating AI into their efforts to safely bring Stendra over the counter under the FDA's guidance with an ACNU guidance. We are utilizing proven existing technology from one of the world's most successful and acknowledged leaders in the industry. We look forward to providing additional details, both about the utilization and the partnership itself in the coming weeks and months. So that's another potential catalyst for ticker PTPI, where they're going to provide details about potentially who this partner is, who this leading multi-billion dollar software provider is, that could be big news for ticker PTPI. I'm still in this play. Whether you guys decided to take profit on this 50% move or not, I understand it was a very, very quick move. And for somebody to take profit on that, they probably would have had to have orders set to fill it, you know, in, in the $2 per share range. I held through it because my idea behind this play is I'm still in this for the FDA news, the FDA, re, you know, you know, uh, meeting in March. So it could this possibly pull back? There's definitely that possibility that we see this 
you know, pull back a little bit. I would prefer to see it hold over $1.50, but if it does break under $1.50, we could see $1.40, $1.30, down to a dollar, even, you know, even a dollar twenty, dollar ten. So there's definitely the possibilities we could see that pullback. If we do see that big of a pullback, you know, I would be looking to add. We do have the 50-day MA at $1.30. So that's going to be some support. $1.30 is going to be good support to look at for PTPI. But I think this is great. This is a great sign going into that catalyst for, you know, next month where we have them entering to an AI license agree agreement with a multi-billion dollar service provider. Huge. And then we have the scheduled type C meeting with FDA on March 26th. So I'm personally still holding this and swinging this for March. The short interest, it went up a little bit here just because it had a lot more volume on the news today. So every time there's a lot of volume, the short interest is going to increase a little bit. Uh, it's only 3.56%. So there's not a lot of shorts on this play. I do believe that this FDA meeting could be nice in March. And it could even run up leading up to that date, in my opinion. Also, BDRX, I've been slowly accumulating this one back uh, after we hit a 200% runner on it. We still have upcoming re uh, data readouts due by March 31st. So in quarter one, which ends March 31st, they have top line data, a readout, and then another readout. So any of those catalysts could be big for the share price for ticker BDRX. I could definitely see BDRX pulling back. Uh, still, there's a gap side to fill or a gap down to fill at $1.54. I could definitely see $1.54. And then a dollar forty, a dollar twenty right now. Overall, right now, dollar twenty is my last, uh, uh, you know, level of support for BDRX. If it breaks under a dollar twenty, I might consider, you know, getting out. But it, in the meantime, I'm going to be in accumulating down to a dollar forty for BDRX. If it, you know, let's say it gets down, you know, to it, 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 you know, some bad news comes out, comes out and nice under a dollar twenty, all the way down to ninety seven cents. I would definitely consider just taking the loss, moving on from BDRX because I already made bank on this play. I'm looking to make a bank on another swing out of it because we do have clinical milestones coming up for ticker BDRX. Loving PTPI, loving BDRX, NAOV. I'm still in this. I did sell half, about you know, a little under half of my position today. On this run up this morning, it was up about 17%. Remember, my average is in the 80 cents levels. So I that was about up 70% of that point. Had to take a little bit of profit off the table. I'm holding the rest of that position for pot a potential PR from NAOV. So, you know, it, everything's looking great right now. I love that PTPI PR. I think it sets us up well for the upcoming FDA Catalyst in March. Drop a like on this video if you do enjoy this content. That's it for me. Peace.